Jesus, He heals all my diseases. Wherever God's people are found, wherever prayer does abound, the glory of the Lord will shine upon us. We can be free and feel His power, so lift your hands in this hour. Let God's healing power come upon you. Praise the Lord. God bless you for tuning in tonight. I trust you've had a great week. I trust this finds you in the blessing of God. Let you and I go together in prayer. It just takes two. And God will minister to both of us. Father, we ask you to take a swift wing and bring the Holy Ghost down upon us. Wherever we are, we know you're with us and you're speaking to us and you're going to help us tonight. Illuminate your word to us. Feed us in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God. I want to speak to you tonight from Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 11. Ephesians 1 and verse 11. I want to speak to you on 20 years and no answer. What do you do when you've prayed for something for 20 years and you still don't have the answer? I'm afraid that's the, that's the place of a lot of us right now. We've had promises from God. We've stood on those promises. We've claimed those promises. We've petitioned God. We've attended prayer revivals. By the way, in January, we're going to have another prayer revival. The Lord gave me the theme for it this week, and I know we're going to have a great and wonderful time. But sometimes there's a long stretch of time before we get our answers. And I just want to speak to that and address it. For the main purpose of letting you know that you should not be weary in well-doing, the answers come for those who persevere. Jesus said when he addressed the seven churches in Revelation, he said, I know that you persevere. I know that you have tried those who say they are of me and they're not and found them to be liars. And he was commending the churches back there for their perseverance. That's such a great, great trait. Because we know that God's hearing and that God answers but there's a differentiation between our timetable and his. And Ephesians 1 and verse 11, Paul addresses this subject and he says, In him also we have obtained an inheritance being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. What powerful, powerful verses these are. This was... Thought came to me as a springboard from one of the people in our church who is a prayer warrior, who is a faithful person, and who has been praying for her family for 20 plus years. The family as of yet have not surrendered to the Lord. And I asked this person, I said, how do you feel I know you, and I know your life, and I know your faithfulness, God. Are you encouraged? Are you discouraged? How do you feel? And has there been a change, even though maybe family members are not yet saved, has there been a change in all of these years? How do you feel? I didn't know what this person would say, but I was pleasantly surprised to hear how that God had worked in this person's life, that God had changed this person, their perspective, their fearfulness that their family members might not make heaven 
and her tendency to try to make things happen. The willingness of the flesh to step in line and do what only God can do is unbelievable. That we think somehow we can make it happen. This person said, I found out through the years that nobody but God can change a heart. And that God, even though these people are not saved, God has changed me in the process. He made the reality of Ephesians 11 through 14 in this person's life, made it a reality. We have obtained an inheritance. We're predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his own will. That we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. In other words, this person described a growth process of going from fearful and intimidated and worried and troubled and vexed to gradually releasing more and more of these souls to the Lord and entering into a place of rest, peace, and joy. You know, if God does this quick, we don't learn the lesson. But if he puts us 20 years on a path and we're faithful to follow through, we will find that God transforms us Little by little, day by day, our minds are transformed. Our hearts are transformed. We gain a new foothold on God. And we learn to have joy in the middle of trials. We learn to trust when there seems to be no reason. These are all spiritual attributes that people cannot make up on their own. They are spiritually discerned and given as gifts by the Holy Spirit to help us through all of the vicissitudes and trials and troubles that we go through in this world. They have less and less effect on us. The deeper we go in God, the less effect trials and attacks of the enemy have on us because we understand that Satan is not in control to start with, that God is, and that he can be trusted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you trust God for two months or you trust God for 20 years, the difference is huge. 20 years of trusting will put something deep in you that hell cannot blast away. And it'll give you confidence and faith and joy. We need to be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Hallelujah. How do we get that sealing? We go through many, many trials and we learn that God is mathematically true to his word and faithful to perform his word. Verse 14 said, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession? Who is the guarantee? The Holy Spirit of promise. He's the guarantee. So when you pray for someone and the Holy Spirit touches you, he's given you a guarantee. This is going to happen. God is honored. God is going to do it. And, and things take time. Remember when Daniel was down by the river and he prayed for 21 days and there was war in heaven over his prayer and his expectancy, but he didn't wear out in 20 days. He didn't give up in 15 days. He didn't say, well, God must not be paying attention. No, God was paying attention. War was going on in the heavenlies over his solid stand alone. There's no record of anybody else. He alone caused war in heaven. You think your prayer is not important. You think God is not listening. God is not faithful. Oh, I tell you, the more you grow in this, the less you receive, the more you're convinced that God is in control. Hallelujah. Our faith grows. Our faith grows. Our faith grows. There's something about it. It goes deeper and gets more rooted in the word of Almighty God. Praise the Lord. So God has transformed this person. And this person, you know, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That word transform is metamorphoso, which we get metamorphosis, which is, 
you know, a caterpillar changing to a butterfly. We become something entirely different because of the spiritual transformation in the heart of believers. And there's no end to this. You keep going, God will keep pulling you in tighter and closer. There'll be more joy in your life. And this is not anything unusual. You say, boy, I've been praying for a long time. I haven't got the answer. Well, rejoice in it. Rejoice in it. God has honored you. God knows that you can do this. God trusts that you're not going to give up and walk away. Throw up your hands. You're the only one that can cancel God's destiny for your life. If you quit, God has no choice. But if you hang in there, if you believe, if you stand strong, the devil is in big, big trouble. So I want to just challenge you. If it's 20 years or 25 years or however long, 40 years like some of the prophets, doesn't matter. God has it all in his hands. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So I challenge you. Keep praying. Keep believing. That's the difference in a wimp and a warrior. A wimp gives up. But a warrior will stand on faith alone. No matter what the circumstances look like. No matter what anybody says. They stand. They stand. They stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I heard Lance Wall now tell about a, a friend of his who was a preacher. And the Lord had given a prophecy to his wife that he was going to have a son. And that that son was going to be used of God. And yet he had a massive heart attack and died. And he was dead for half an hour or more. And she refused to give up. And she ran in there, threw herself across his body and said, God, you said, I stand on your word and promise. And all of a sudden he took a breath. God brought him back and they had a son. And the son is used of God. Why? Because God's not a man that he would lie. Sometimes he'll let it go to extreme measures. The man will be 100, the woman will be 90. God will say, I think we're just about ready for me to get the glory. Nobody but me, hallelujah. He wants to let it go to some extreme positions many times so that he will be sure and gain all the glory. Father, I ask you to encourage the heart of every person who's standing in the gap and making up the hedge for somebody's soul for some marriage, for somebody's children. I pray, God, that you will give them faith and courage, give them tenacity, give them boldness in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you. I'll see you Sunday. Praise the Lord.